The book of Ezekiel chapter 39. Son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around and drag you along. I will bring you from the far north and send you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will strike you bow, strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. On the mountains of Israel you will fall, you and all your troops and the nations with you. I will give you as food to all kinds of carrion birds and to the wild animals. You will fall in the open field, for I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in safety in the coastland, and they will know that I am the Lord. I will make known my holy name among my people Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profaned, and the nations will know that I, the Lord, am the Holy One in Israel. It is coming. I will surely take place. It will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is the day I have spoken of. Then those who live in the towns of Israel will go out and use the weapons of four fuel and burn them up. The small and large shields, the bows and arrows, the war clubs and spears. For seven years they will use them for fuel. They will not need to gather f wood from the fields or cut it from the forests because they will use the weapons for fu fuel and they will plunder those who plundered them and loot those who loot them, looted them, declares the Sovereign Lord. On that day, I will give Gog a burial place in Israel, in the valley of those who travel east of the sea. I will block the way of travelers, because Gog and all his hordes will be buried there. So it will be called the valley of Haman Gog. For seven months, the Israelites will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will, be bur will bury them, and the day I display my glory will be a memorable day for them, declares the Sovereign Lord. People will be continually employed in cleansing the land. They will spread out across the land and, along with others, they will bury any bodies that are lying on the ground. After the seven months, they will carry out a more detailed search. As they go through the land, anyone who sees a humble bone will leave a marker beside it until the grave diggers buried in the valley of Haman Gog, near a town called Hamana. And so they will cleanse the land. Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Call out to every kind of bird and all the wild animals. Assemble and come together from all around to the sacrifice that I am preparing for you. The great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. There you will eat flesh, fresh, uh, flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of the princes of the earth as if they were rams and lambs, goats and bulls all of them fattened animals from Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing for you, you will eat fat till you are glutted and drink blood till you are drunk. At my table, you will eat your fill of horses and riders, mighty men and soldiers of every kind, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will display my glory among the nations and all the nations will see the punishment I inflict and the hand I lay on them. From that day forward, the people of Israel will know that I am the Lord their, their God. And the nations will know that the people of Israel went into exile for their sin, because they were unfaithful to me. So I hid my face from them and handed them over to their enemies, and they, will all, they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their offenses, and I hid my face from them. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will now restore the fortunes of Jacob and will have compassion on all the people of Israel, and I will be zealous for my 
holy name. They will forget their shame and all the unfaithfulness they showed toward me when they lived in safety in their land with no one to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the nations and have gathered them from the countries of their enemies, I will be proved holy through them in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. For though I sent them to, into exile among the nations, I will gather them to their own land, not leaving any behind. I will no longer hide my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit on the people of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 40 The Temple Area Restored In the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th of the month in the 14th year after the fall of the city, on that very day, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he took me there. In visions of God, he took me to the land of Israel and set me on a very high mountain, on whose south side were some buildings that looked like a city. He took me there, and I saw a man whose appearance was like bronze. He was standing in the gateway with a linen cord and a measuring rod in his hand. The man said to me, Son of man, Look carefully and listen closely and pay attention to everything I am going to show you, for that is why you have been brought here. Tell the people of Israel everything you see. The east gate to the outer court, I saw a wall completely surrounding the temple area. The length of the measuring rod in a man's hand was six long cubits, each of which was a cubit and a hand breadth. He measured the wall. It was one measuring rod, thick and one rod high. Then he went to the east gate. He climbed its steps and measured the threshold of the gate. It was one rod deep. The alcoves for the guards were one rod long, long and one rod wide. And the projecting walls between the alcoves were five cubits thick and the threshold of the gate next to the uh, portico facing the temple was one rod de deep. Then he measured the portico of the gateway. It was eight cubits deep and its gems were two cubits thick. The portico of the gateway faced the temple. Inside the east gate were three alcoves on each side. The three had the same measurements and the faces of the projecting walls on each side had the same measurements. Then he measured the width of the entrance of the gateway. It was 10 cubits and its length was 13 cubits. In front of each alcove was a wall on one cubit high and the alcoves were 6 cubits square. Then he measured the gateway from top of the, the rear wall of one alcove to the top of the opposite one. The distance was 25 cubits from one parapet opening to the opposite one. He measured along the faces of the projecting walls all around the inside of the gateway, 60 cubits. The measurement was up to the portico facing the courtyard. The distance from the entrance of the gateway to the far, en far end of its portico was 50 cubits. The alcoves and the projecting walls inside the gateway were surmounted by narrow parapet, parapet openings all around. As was the portico, the opening all around faced inward. The faces of the projecting walls were decorated with palm trees. The outer court then he brought me into the outer court. There I saw some rooms and a pavement that had been constructed all around the court. There were 30 rooms along the pavement. It abutted the sides of the gateways and was as wide as they were long. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the distance from the inside of the lower gateway to the outside of the inner court. It was a hundred cubits on the east side as well as on the north. The north gate. Then he measured the length of the width of the north gate leading into the outer court. Its 
alcoves, three of each side, its projecting walls and its portico had the same measurements as those of the first gateway. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its openings, its portico and its palm tree decorations had the same measurements as those of the gate facing east. Seven steps led up to it. With its portico opposite them, there was a gate to the inner court facing the north gate, just as there was on the east. He measured from one gate to the opposite one. It was a hundred cubits. The south gate. Then he led me to the south side and I saw the south gate. He measured its gems and its portico and they had the same measurements as the, as the others. The gateway and its portico had narrow openings all around, like the openings of the others. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Seven steps led up to it with its portico opposite them. It had palm tree decorations on the faces of the projecting walls on each side. The inner court also had a gate facing south and he measured from this gate to the outer gate on the south side. It was a hundred cubits. The gates to the inner court. Then he brought me into the inner court through the south gate and he measured the south gate. It had the same measurement as the others. It is its alcoves, its projecting walls and its portico had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. The porticos of the gateways around the inner courts were 25 cubits wide and 5 cubits deep. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated its gems and 8 steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the inner court on the east side and he measured the gateway. It had the same measurements as the others. Its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated the jams of the, you know, on each other eat, uh, either side and eight steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the north gate and measured it. It had the same measurements as the others, as did its alcoves, its projecting walls and its portico, and it had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court, palm trees decorated the gems on either side, and eight steps led up to it. The rooms for preparing sacrifices. A room with a doorway was by the portico in each of the inner gateways where the burnt offerings were washed. In the portico of the gateway were two tables on each side on which the burnt offerings, sin offerings and guilt offerings were slaughtered. By the outside wall of the portico of the gateway near the steps at the entrance of the north gateway were two tables and the, on the other side of the steps were two tables. So there were four tables on one side of the gateway and four on the other, eight tables in all, on which the sacrifices were slaughtered. There were also four tables of dressed stones for the burnt offerings, each a cubit and a half long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit high. On them, were placed utensils for slaughtering the burnt offerings and the other sacrifices, and double pronged hooks, each a handbreadth long, were attached to the wall all around. The tables were for the flesh of the offerings. The rooms for the priests outside the inner gate within the inner court were two rooms, one at the side of the north gate and facing south, and another at the side of the south gate facing north. He said to me, 
The room facing south is for the priests who guard the temple, and the room facing north is for the priests who guard the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, who are the only Levites who may draw near to the Lord to minister before him. Then he measured the court. It was square, a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits wide, and the altar was in front of the temple, the new temple. He brought me to the portico of the temple and measured the gems of the portico. They were five cubits wide on either side. The width of the entrance was 14 cubits, and its projecting walls were three cubits wide on either side. The portico was 20 cubits wide and 12 cubits from front to back. It was reached by a flight of stairs, and there were pillars on each side of the gems. Amen.